Hi there, I'm Dustin Warnke. Welcome to this exciting edition of Gun Tales. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects and that is purchasing a used gun. Now in this case we're going to talk about rifles, but the same concept exists for rifles, shotguns, pistols, and any other sporting arms like that. We're going to talk today about a couple of things to look for and warning signs to look for as well when purchasing a new gun. Now, before we get started, a couple of little quick tidbits here. You've got a uh, scope coat that's covering our scope today, and then you also have a high score black rifle rest that is holding our gun up today. So I wanted to plug those two sponsors. They are fantastic products. Check both of those out on our website. Now, what I have in front of me here is a Belgium Mauser, FN Belgium Mauser, Colombian contract, the action and everything has been completely sporterized to become what it is today and it's a 270 Winchester. And it shoots a fantastic uh, 150 or 130 grain bullet uh, attack driver. I bought this at a pawn shop uh, about a year and a half ago or so, almost two years ago actually, and uh, purchased this gun in trade for a Yugoslavian Mauser that I had. All I'd done was put a scout scope on the uh, top of the uh, receiver and uh, didn't do anything else to it. It had gone up in value. I had actually bought the gun for $100 and it had just appreciated in value, which is one thing that can happen with some used guns. Used guns typically hold their value fairly well though, for sure, and are a fantastic investment to pass down from generation to generation. The thing I'm gonna talk about today is making sure you buy a gun that's going to last the generations and what to look for and some warning signs to look after as well. But this particular gun is a tack driver. It has a barrel that's been uh, rechambered and sporterized on top of it, so it's not an original Mauser ba barrel. This has actually been done by a company by the name of Roberts Firearms out of Indiana. I did a little bit of research when I purchased this gun because it was such a fantastic deal. The gun scope and everything I got from the pawn shop was valued and retailed about $250 or $300, and that's a fantastic deal to get both. You can buy a new gun for that in some cases, but um, you can certainly pay a whole lot more for a rifle as well. So these represent a good um, example of a good rifle to buy. So let's talk about some of the things. I redid this stock. I also rebuild, uh, reblued this barrel. Um, that, other than that, I also redid the barrel channel in here as well to free float the barrel from the stock. And we'll talk about what to look for there. And uh, just cleaned it and, and really took good care of it because it had been taken care of fairly well. A little bit of neglect from the previous owner, but uh, I certainly ended up with a good deal. Let's talk about one of the first things to look over. The initial stock of the gun. Okay, You're either going to deal with a synthetic or a wood stock in most cases with a rifle. And in this particular case, this stock was a Boyd's or some kind of an aftermarket Mauser stock. And they normally run about $100 to $150 used. Uh, or new to get a Mauser stock. So this one had a little bit of damage to it, but I didn't take that to an account um, and uh, did not have any major splitting in it. That's the main thing I'm looking for when I'm looking at a gun like this. I don't want to have any kind of splits in the forearm or the butt stock or any of that issues, that, any of those kind of issues. You're going to have some major issues if you, um, if you have a broken stock and that's going to need to come into play when it comes to talking about the final price for the gun. The next thing I look for is the crown of the rifle. The crown is the very tip of the muzzle, and the best way to inspect that is to look right at it, but obviously you want to make sure that you open up the action and check. Even I stick my little pinky finger in here to make sure there's nothing in the chamber. Look at the crown. The crown needs to be shiny. It needs to be free of any pitting or anything else. If the crown is excessively oiled, you've got a problem most likely. You need to clean that oil off just like if your uh, barrel is excessively oiled. That's a telltale warning sign that something is being hidden from you. So clean that barrel, clean that crown out. If you didn't bring one with you, um, having a one-piece cleaning rod at your disposal is a good idea. It's kind of cumbersome to carry around a little bit though. So uh, in that case, I even carry around with me one of these little boar snakes. You can get these in several different varieties of calibers. They are my choice for cleaning rifles these days and shotguns. And uh, carry one around in your pocket and just uh, take that out, clean out the barrel. Make sure you're looking at clean and dry. Uh, when you're assessing the quality of that barrel. Now, the next thing we're going to be looking for is going to be uh, the barreling and the rifling itself. This barrel had a little bit of surface rust, nothing that's really going to be a deal breaker though. I went ahead and just took care of looking at um, 
just seeing how deep that rust was, and it wasn't that deep. I took a little bit of uh, triple lot, I'm sorry, quadruple lot um, uh, steel wool, took that off, and re blued, cold blued the barrel here at home. It came out pretty decent for my first try of cold bluing something, so that worked out well. But uh, major surface rust, again, if the parts, kind of like a used car, if the parts on the outside look really bad, the parts you can't see, such as in a semi-automatic gun and so on and so forth, are probably going to be problem problematic and dirty as well. Uh, another thing to look after is to take a flashlight. I just brought a flashlight. You can get a bore light. That's probably a little bit better uh, for this. And you can buy bore lights at gun stores and gun shows all over the place. And with the barrel, making sure that the chamber and everything's unloaded, shine this down there. If you have a bolt action, you can look straight through and just shine the barrel in this part of the, uh, in the muzzle part of the gun. But uh, otherwise, you can shine the... Um, shine into the barrel and look down the muzzle to see what kind of rifling you have and again making sure everything's clean and dry in that regard uh, you need to make sure that you have a shiny bore and not a dark bore or frosted bore dark and frosted bores good sign of rust and good sign of corrosion now i say this with the exception of military guns i own a couple of mosey nagants that had been road hard and put up wet during the 30s and 40s during world war ii so something to be in consideration there is that they were all arsenally refurbished and that's a consideration I had to make in those regards for those particular guns. So it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but uh, you want to make sure that, and especially in a commercial gun that's post-World War II, that you've got good, shiny-looking, uh, crisp lands and grooves and it's not been shot out. That's an obvious thing, especially for a shotgun or a rifle. Or a pistol, really, for that matter, as well. So, crown barrel inside and outside then we're going down to actually check how the stock and the barrel meet up there's either a glass bedded it's either affixed to that barrel especially a lot of semi-automatic actions are going to be like that or you're going to have a free floated or glass bedded barrel now this particular gun's free floated i know because i did the free floating myself if the gun is represented as being free floated uh then that's again going to uh, impair the accuracy of it good or bad you're going to have a uh, good way to test that, and that's with a dollar bill I brought. You should be paying cash for a firearm anyway, so I just brought a dollar bill to show you. You're going to want to slide that all the way to the action and move it back and forth. You should have no hang-ups anywhere. If you do, you probably have a problem in that regard. So make sure that you check that out. See if that's an issue. And if it's not an issue, it is as sold and, uh, or it is as advertised, you're in good shape. So that's another thing. If it's glass bedded, you're not going to be able to do that, obviously. Or if it's bedded to the stock, um, it's going to be kind of glued on there. And glue is probably not the right word, but it's going to be attached to the stock. Can't really do that. I have a semi-automatic that I can't do that with. It's okay. Okay. Uh, you just want to check in those cases to make sure that you don't have any main, uh, major inletting issues, any kind of major bulges, or uh, where the stock is unevenly connected to the barrel in those cases. And just overall, you want to make sure you don't have any major bulges. Now, that may sound really trivial, but I have run into rifles that literally have bulging inside the barrel, and people just pass it off as, oh, it should still shoot fine. No, it's not going to shoot fine in that regard. Another thing is to check, even with your flashlight still, if you cannot remove the bolt, check into looking at the bolt face, especially in a semi-automatic or lever action gun. Uh, this is a bolt action with a Mauser. It has a little clip. I can just remove the bolt like that and show it to you. It's clean. You want to check that the firing hole is not overly large. It shouldn't be. It should not be dirty or full of corrosion. If so, clean it and inspect it the best that you can. Uh, your bolt should also not be over greased. That's also another sign that there might be a problem somewhere. Okay. Um, that's just a good way to look at it. The lug should not be worn down, and those are just, you know, this is a Mauser, so this is definitely a typical uh, gun that you might run into in the firearms market, but not every bolt's going to be the same. So uh, this particular sporterization on this gun was done well. The bolt was bent down. Initially, it was a um, straight bolt bent down. The safety was accommodating for this gun, so those are all good things to look for. If you have any pitting on the bolt face, just like pitting inside the crown or pitting inside the, the rifle barrel, you're going to have some accuracy issues or potential accuracy issues. It doesn't always mean that you're going to have accuracy issues, but sometimes it does. So that's a good consideration to make there. I'm putting that back inside there. Um, also, you can just check and how, see how the action is bedded to the stock as well. You want to make sure that uh, this particular gun, I noticed, had pitting between the stock 
and the action, and that's just the lower part of the action. That's just due to wear and tear from the gun's previous life as a military gun. Not necessarily a bad accuracy effect drawer, but um, just something to keep in consideration. Another thing is to get a set of dummy rounds for the rifle that you want, and a set of headspace gauges, if you can. If you're able to get a set of those, if you know what caliber you're shopping for. If I'm shopping for a 270, that's a no-brainer, okay? I just get a set of headspace gauges, especially for a bolt-action rifle. If you don't know what headspace is uh, guns post World War II don't have as many headspace problems but still not a bad idea to see if you have any headspace issues and uh, if you don't know what I mean by that look that up that's very important especially in bolt action guns but in the case of uh, test firing the gun which you can't obviously do in a gun store or in a gun show um, you want to see if you can dry fire it, but I would recommend getting you a dummy round, which is obviously not a live round of ammunition, and uh, put that in there, pull the trigger, and see how the trigger pull is. This particular gun has a little bit harder trigger pull than I liked, and I went ahead and got a trigger job done. I had some uh, work done with the gunsmith there, but all the other work I did myself, such as the cold bluing, redoing the stock, and uh, just cleaning it up in that regard. So it's really a lot of fun. Uh, to play around with these old guns and uh, this is a good specimen of what to look for in buying a used rifle so your trigger your action your stock your overall barrel and crown are all important accuracy uh, considerations to make because you do not want a gun that's going to be a tomato stick and that's the joke in buying an old gun that does not shoot well it's hard to get rid of uh, when accuracy especially in a rifle is not made a uh, primary consideration another thing to check as I said the the main wood stock you want to make sure is not split or warped in any way shape or form you want to check it throughout and I don't remember if I mentioned this or not you want to check to see if this stock and this wood is sealed it should not have any serious dark spots in it and that's such as wood um, uh, it gets these dark spots in it from being over oiled and synthetic stocks a lot of people think are impenetrable to the elements and in a way they are but in another way a consideration to make is that your synthetic stock may be warped and the best way to check that is to chamber the rifle not chamber the rifle I'm sorry uh, shoulder the rifle and if it uh, goes to your point of aim immediately and it's not canting to the left or the right on the forearm area you probably have a good stock in that regard but synthetic stocks especially are not cheap to replace in these commercial rifles or these Mausers especially. So uh, you want to make sure you've got a good stock because that stock uh, contacting your barrel is going to affect your accuracy whether or not it's free floated or not. So good, bad, or otherwise. That's a consideration to make for sure. So for this segment of Gun Tales, this is Dustin Warnke. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Good luck in purchasing your next rifle. I have a whole bunch of them. As a matter of fact, they are a blast to shoot and collect. So have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching us today. Mm -hmm.